Night Tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech Byte Tips video. Today's video is going to be kind of a prerequisite of other videos that I'm working on, but I think it's important for you to know how to set this up properly if you're going to use applications that rely on a SQL database. I've been working with a few videos that are coming up and all of these videos have in common that they require you to have either a MariaDB database or a MySQL database or a PostgreSQL database so basically a mysql type of database usually the creators of these applications they when they create a docker compose file to deploy the infrastructure they do it based on creating this infrastructure in your own computer and docker behaves kind of differently in that way versus if you're in a synology nas so we're going to cover how we can set up a mysql or mariadb database in your Synology NAS so that then you can use it from your applications to store your data. Why do we need to do that? The thing that I want to cover is that while trying these videos, I noticed that if you try to set up a MariaDB or MySQL database or PostgreSQL database in the Synology NAS as a container, it's very problematic for several reasons. Number one, for example, if you need a PostgreSQL database, that conflicts directly with how Synology works because Synology under the hood uses a Postgres database for its own things. So then you need to try to get another port for that container to run, but then the applications that rely on that database, it's hard to configure them to look for another port. And so far it has been very difficult for me to get a Postgres container running in a Synology NAS. And again, with the MariaDB and the MySQL, databases the problem is a little bit different is that because of how the container manager works in 7.2 of dsm it is harder now to try to get into the containers in a terminal like i've tried it many times and even though the database allegedly is running i cannot get into an executable terminal inside the container and that is a big problem because the way that synology works with the containers is that it creates its own internal networks for the different containers and it assigns an IP to each container inside that network. When you're trying to communicate from one container to the other, by default, all of those database containers are restricted to only allowing connections from inside the machine. So from localhost or 127.001. But since we have a virtual network there, the connection from another container is going to come from another IP. It's not going to be that. So whenever you try to connect, it's going to tell you that you're not authorized. You cannot connect to the MySQL or MariaDB database from that other container because it's on another IP that is not authorized. And that's when you need to have access to the terminal to execute a command in the database container to then create a user that has permissions from outside the local machine in the container. So it would be outside in another container. But since I cannot get that terminal going, there's no way to do that. So the workaround that we have for that is that we're going to install MariaDB, but instead of in a container, we're going to install it in package center. So it's going to be available at the NAS level. So that's going to be the workaround. We are going to have a MySQL database that is going to be running not in a container, but as a package inside the Synology NAS. And to do that, it's pretty straight up. We need to go into the package center. We're going to all packages and then we can search here, MariaDB. You click on here and then you're going to do the installation of MariaDB by clicking the install button right here. So you just have to wait now for it to download the package, to install the package and then get it up and running. We need to put a pretty strong password here for the root user. So you need to make sure that it's something that is not easy to guess and something that you can remember. So in this case, since this is for the video and I'm not gonna use this, I'm gonna pick something easy. So set it up with the password that we specified for the root user and we'll be back when that is done. What we need to do is we need to click on the plus sign here to create a new connection. Oh, we need to give it a new name so I can call this VNAS Maria 
USB, for example. And then I'm gonna put the IP of my NAS in here. And then we're gonna put port 3306 because that's the one that we use for that. And then the username that we're gonna use is the root. And then for the password, we can save it if we click on the store in vault and we can put it here to save it. But first we wanna test the connection. So I'm gonna click on the test connection button. So we get an error when we try to connect to the server. It says that we're unable to connect to localhost because like I said, by default, this is gonna be restricted. And right now we have no way to connect to that database from outside of the server. So we need to fix that. So if we go back here into the package center and then we click on open here, we're gonna get a pop-up window. And in this pop-up window, if you notice, it says that TCP IP connection is not enabled from the outside. So if you click on it and enable it on port 3306, now it at least will let the connection through to the Maria database instance. So we click apply, we wait for this to apply. And then once it is done, we should at least be able to communicate with the MariaDB server. So now we can remove here, go back into MySQL Workbench and we try the connection again. And it says it failed to connect, but this time it's not because we couldn't reach the server. It's because our, our root user is not allowed to connect from outside of the server. So that's the problem that we are facing now. So we need to get into the MariaDB instance and allow our root user to log in from outside the machine. So I'm gonna need to make changes in there to allow for this. So now we need to create a user or a version of the root user that is allowed to access the database from outside the NAS. So for that, we're gonna go into our control panel and then we're gonna go into the terminal and SNMP and we're gonna make sure that we have SSH enabled here and then we're gonna apply that because we need to log into the NAS using SSH to make changes there. So now that this has been applied, we should be able to open a command prompt and in here we should be able to log into the NAS using our credentials. So we can do the username that we have at the NAS and then the IP of the NAS. And then we say yes, and then it's gonna prompt us for the password. And then we're in. Once we're in, when we see this, then we're in the NAS and we should be able to execute commands here. Now that we're inside the NAS, then we're gonna execute the command mysql-u for the user. And then we say we wanna log in as a root and then dash P so that it prompts us for the password for the root user. So when we execute this command, we get the prompt and then we're gonna put the password that we assigned for that root user. So in my case, it was my super password, 1357, 1357 characters and enter. And now as you can see, we're inside MariaDB inside the NAS because when we're inside the same machine, we're allowed by default. But now I want to be able to connect from other machine into the database. I'm going to do this, but I do not recommend you do this. You should actually not do this. This is highly discouraged, but I'm going to create a version of the root user that then I can use from my SQL workbench in my computer to then create other users and databases and things later if I need. So to do that, you need to create a user and you need to grant it permission to execute connections and actions from outside the NAS. So there are a few commands that we need to run. The first command that we need to run is create user and we're gonna specify the name of that user. And then after at, we're gonna put in here would be either the IP of a computer in your network that you want to allow, or if you put this, it says any computer from anywhere. It's highly discouraged, so don't do this. Uh, in this case, it's just for the sake of the video. You could be just creating another user that is different from root, and you are given the permissions as an administrator. So that, that would be the best way to go. And in here, then we, we say identified by, and that's gonna be the password that this user is gonna use to connect from outside the machine. So I'm gonna put the same, my super password, 1357, 1357 and i'm going to close this and execute it and it says okay the user was created because the query was okay but now this user exists in the database but it doesn't have permission to anything so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say grant all privileges on everything to 
this user that I just created and I'm going to give it grant options. So it is basically a god in this database. So when I execute this, now that user has permission to do anything. It's like a god in the database. And now I need to flush the privileges to make sure that everything gets applied. And now I can exit out of here. And with that, we have created the user that is allowed to connect from outside the NAS. We gave it all the privileges, so it's a god in the database. And we have made sure that all those privileges get applied. So now we can exit out of this. We're done with that. And then we can try again and see if we can actually connect now to the database using that user. So let's do a test connection. Now you can see that it's prompting me for the password. So I'm going to put my super password 1357 1357. And I can save it in the vault here and then OK. And it tells me that, you know, it, there's a warning here because I'm using an old version of MySQL Workbench, but it is able to connect. So we can say continue anyway. And then it says that the connection was successful. So that validates that yes, we can do that. So then I can just save this. And once I save that, I have it here. If I click on that box, there we go. We're connected to the MariaDB. And as you can see, you, we have nothing right now. So now with this root user, we can manage the database inside the NAS and create other databases and tables and stuff. And then we can create other users that are going to be limited to accessing a specific database and a, and a specific set of tables. So that's how we would go ahead and use this instance of MariaDB as the backend database for our container applications that need a MySQL database because of the issue with the containers running databases that I mentioned before. So that's going to be it for this one. I hope you liked it. I, I hope you find it useful. We're going to be using this in future videos. So definitely I recommend that you do this if you're going to install any of the other applications that I'm going to reference in the future. And remember, if you like the content, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have not done so, share the videos with people that you think might find it useful. Leave a comment in, your, in the comment section below if you would like me to cover a specific topic or an application that you like or something like that. And I'll do my best to bring you a video for that. Remember, I'm not monetizing the channel, so you should not be getting ads on my videos. And I entirely rely on your support. So I really appreciate if you use the link in the description below to give me a donation that really motivates me and helps me to focus on the channel. And that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.